Welcome to the Myth and Magic Authors Podcast, folklore and fantasy topics aimed at creative storytellers. To write stories and challenge your brain with exciting ideas, delve into these presentations and reflections. See how fantasy realms are based on actual world history, legend, and lore. Study fairy tales, nature fables, and supernaturalism to engage in a jumble of concepts that will trigger your fancy and get you writing imaginatively. Now, here's your host, Neil Mack. Hello, fantasy fiction fans and fantasy creatives everywhere. It's so good to speak to you again. So today I've got an exciting show because I'm speaking today with the remarkable tech founder, and she's really quite a brilliant entrepreneur too, Tanya Goff. Now, Tanya has created, and she's now launched, an exciting new writing program called Story Builder. And it's Builder is spelled B-I-L-D-E-R. And she explains when I talk to her why it's spelled that way. And Tanya takes a unique approach to teaching authorship. And so she wanted her program to help people with the theory and the practice of learning writing skills. So she describes Story Builder as a play area for creatives to come and to muck about in like a play pit and create their works. So because of that we talk about fan fiction and how it differs from other fiction. We talk about how the publishing industry has changed over the last 15 years and we talk about the nuts and bolts of creative writing because Story Builder gives you a chance to put plots together. Tanya is also a fantasy author and she's written some middle grade fantasy fiction and some fantasy infused short stories for adults. So we chat about those experiences as well and about her general experiences in the world of authoring. And of course, I ask her why she wanted to leave the writing for a while and go and create this remarkable new writing program. So without further ado, let's go over to author and tech founder, Tanya Goff. Hello, hello, how are you doing, all right? I'm fine, thank you, how are you? (laughs) Very good, thank you. How's the weather there? You're in Toronto, are you? Yes, we're having weather today. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) we're just about to have ours. It's coming in, off the Bristol Channel, about 95 miles an hour, they say. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it was, it, we had a lot of snow this winter, and it was very, very cold. And then suddenly it got very warm. So today it's about six or seven degrees. Tonight it's going to be minus 10 or minus 20, 15, <laughs> something like that. So we've got rain coming through that's going to turn into a massive snowstorm with ice in the middle. Yeah, it's it's a good day. <laughs> oh. Well, that's just, the thing about living, <laughs> living in Canada, I suppose. <laughs> Well, it's nice being in the pandemic, so I never leave my house anyway. I I wouldn't know if the news didn't tell me what the weather was. (laughs) Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, it's lovely to talk to you, Tanya. Mm, So am I saying it correctly? Tanya Goff, is that right? It is Goff, yes. I love talking to Brits. You're the only ones who know how to spell it, to pronounce it correctly. (laughs) Yeah, it's a a name which is fairly common in our country. But I don't know where it actually originates. So My 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 family, well, we go back to uh, Kidderminster, uh, back to the 1800s. uh, Yeah, so Welsh, English border somewhere in there. Yeah, Yeah. we only got back to about 1800. And then after that, it falls off. My great, 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 whatever (laughs) grandfather was an illiterate uh, peddler. So uh, we couldn't go further than that. Wow. (laughs) Well, that's very good anyway. You've done that far. (laughs) Have you been to Kidderminster to find out what it's like? Um, I have not. I've spent quite a bit of time in Birmingham, oh, yeah. um, but uh, I, I used to I used to own a Shakespeare specialty catalog, um, oh. and we did a lot of work with the Shakespeare Institute. Um, so I was in Birmingham quite a bo- quite a lot. They yeah. we uh, we did some work with the university there. So because no, nobody um, in England ever actually acknowledge this the fact that um Shakespeare must have spoken with a brummy accent yes <laughs> you probably talk like that because that's yeah. where the area is I you know it's so funny that we have this idea that uh Shakespeare is like hoity-toity exactly. and you know it's an ordinary bloke it, it, or, or, and writing like you know poop and fart jokes I mean yeah, really exactly. I mean you know I, I yeah I think it's fun 
<laughs> in uh, England, we have uh, a tradition of pantomime where people mm -hmm. are encouraged to shout things mm -hmm. out and they talk <laughs> right. directly to the, uh, yeah, they break the fifth wall and talk directly to the audience and the audience is allowed to talk back. Well, in right. Shakespeare's day, that was how all plays <laughs> were handled, <laughs> weren't they? Yeah, pretty much. I, I, I kind of miss that. I think that we need to get back to that. Yeah. Much more fun. Yeah. Anyway, so um, I wanted to talk to you mostly about Story Builder. So we're going to talk about that quite a bit, but also a little okay. bit about your own, I suppose, journey into authorship. But let's start, sure. I think, with the Story Builder, which mm -hmm. is incidentally spelt mm -hmm. like a German word, S-T-O-R-Y-B-I-L-D-E-R, -E isn't it? That's right. All we're missing is you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, um, yes, um, that was intentional for a couple of reasons. One is that story builder with a U is, you know, can be, it's, it's just a very common uh, search word and, and could be, and could be mistaken. Yeah. Uh, but also uh, the word build, it, it's not just a German word, but the word build exists in about 14 different languages, uh, meaning uh, for the most part picture, or um, actually in Haitian, uh, it means uh, to dream. Uh, so it's a wonderful word that for me takes story building to the next level. It sort of, it encapsulates the idea of um, imagining your story and sort of exploring it, you know, in, in, a, in a much more sort of tactile and, and th uh, multidimensional way than just through words. Wow, you're talking my language here because um, one of the things that I keep going on about on my podcast and with other authors is the the creativity and the imaginations that was required. A lot of people get stuck. This is how I see it with just producing words, you know, word counts, word sprints. You know, it's all about words. Whereas I say, no, it's actually not. It's actually all about imagination and creativity. So you're speaking my language here. Yes, and, and very much about discovery as well. And I think that's something that I always felt was failing in a lot of the other writing programs that are out there. I mean, a lot of them exist uh, for people who already know how to write and know what they're doing. They want an uh -huh. organizational tool and they want to be able to manage their workflow. And yeah. that's all great. But for newer writers and for people who uh, approach writing from a more sort of organic aspect, yeah. um, I didn't feel like they were really being served. So uh -huh. I really wanted to create something that uh, enables you to get into your story, but then play around with it. And wherever you are in your story, you should be able to, you know, edit and change and, and write things and sort of capture your thoughts as you're going along. Uh, but at the same time, you know, not being sort of constrained by having to do everything from, from a, a to Z or to write your story from beginning to end. Because the truth is we don't conceive our stories that way. And, That's true. Um, and, 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 you know, we, we can't really be forced to produce them that way. I mean, it's great for some people, but I think for most of us, we get sort of halfway into our story and before we realize what, what it's actually about, we need to go back and yeah. dig and, you know, and, and play around with it until we sort of find what the core of it is. And I wanted to create something that would capture that. So. like that yeah that's another thing that I've been talking about recently mm -hmm. about trying to discover your theme mm -hmm. preferably before you start writing but so many right. people they mm -hmm. get halfway through before they actually think now I've just realized what the theme of my story is yeah, it's that's almost right. like a dream you know like dreams don't really come in a in a in a linear fashion do they they come all at once and then afterwards somebody <laughs> says to you oh that's the, probably the meaning of that dream and then sort of penny drops oh yeah it is <laughs> yes yeah exactly uh, I mean for me I I for, for in my personal writing uh, process, I, I find that I can't really start writing until I understand what the germ of the story is going to be. Yeah, um, I need to know what that through. It may not be the through story, the through theme. I need to know what it's what the th story is really about, and then everything else sort of piles up on top of it. Yeah. Um, so for me, you know, I sort of need to do some of that exploration and thinking. Like sometimes I'll spend you know months just thinking about a story before I actually start putting words to paper because yeah. I haven't sort of figured out what the kernel of it is. Uh, but I know that for a lot of other people, you need to put like words down and start playing around with the words and figuring it out uh, from you know from what you what you've actually got on the written page. So it, being able to capture both of those kinds of processes, I think, were really important to me. Yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. So then uh, quickly tell us what story building is then, <laughs> as best you can. Sure. Uh, so it's a creative writing platform, and it's designed primarily for new and aspiring writers, although I have quite a lot of, I guess you would call them pro or semi-pro writers um, in you know using the system as well. But I wanted to uh, build something that sort of sat in between whatever it is that you're learning in school or not learning in school about writing <laughs> and yeah. uh, the lack of information that's available between that and the other sort of professional tools that are on the market. 
So there are uh, two different ways that you can approach your story. There is a story engine, which gives you a much more structured view of your story. You can go through and create some worlds. Uh, you do your world building. You can create characters. Uh, you can uh, work through your story in order, or you can jump around however you, however you wish. Uh, then there's a toolbox which takes and sort of blows all that open. So if you're more, if you just want to jump in and move things around, and that's where all the tools are and uh, reporting and other sort of uh, elements that are sort of capturing uh, what you're building um, on the underside so that you can sort of get a more holistic view of your story as you're going, regardless of what order you're building it. So if you're jumping around and doing your story in piecemeal, uh, you should be able to go into your reports and figure out like what's, what information is missing and where. Uh, there's an under, there are underlying uh, outlines that we provide. Uh, so when you come into the story, we ask you to choose from one of the seven basic plots, or you can choose one of the base, the blank ones if you prefer. You can do a three. Right now we have three and five act sort of structures that you can start with, but you can choose a blank one and just do your own thing if you if that's what you prefer. Uh, yeah. I'm hoping to do one acts uh, coming in so that you can just do everything on your own, but uh, that's coming up uh, fairly soon. Uh, but if you want to start your story as a quest narrative or as uh, rags to riches or whatever it is you choose, we provide that to you as a starting point, uh, along with an underlying education layer that will sort of help to guide you and help you understand sort of what's expected at any given part of that particular arc that you've chosen. And that helps you to keep your story on, on, on track. But at the same time, it's all editable and it's all optional. So if you, we tell you that this is sort of what generally happens and you decide you want to do your own thing, you're more than welcome to do it. No red flags are going to go off. No bells are going to start ringing telling you you're wrong. It's just if you're going to make those choices, you should make those choices because they're a choice and not because you didn't know any better. So, uh, so as you build your story, you're building it with the original outline as a reference. Um, so that it, again, helps you sort of keep things on track. Um, and, um, you know, you can keep track of which characters are in which scenes, so you can start to build timelines, see what, see where your characters are in time and space as you're building your story. Wow, that's <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty comprehensive. It reminds, it makes me feel as if, if, you, if I started using this, if I wrote my first book with this, I possibly wouldn't have required a developmental editor <laughs> later on to kind of Put it into the right order because uh, of people i think when people first start writing mm. they understand more or less what is required because they've read a lot but then trying to do it yourself is a bit like riding a bike you, you can watch people ride a bike over and over again but it doesn't mm. mean to say you can get on one and ride it straight away yourself yes absolutely and, and narrative structure is is very much at the heart of story builder that's very much where uh, my mind is and where uh where i think that a lot of the other formats are, are sort of missing. So if we can help to provide uh, enough structure to help you to give you guidance, but not so much structure that it's forcing everybody to write the same book. We, yeah. I, it's again, very important to me that everybody write the story that they want to write. So we create, I wanted to create uh, uh, structures that uh, give you choices and give you options, but then don't lock you in. So you can, again, change things up. Uh, we also, because, and yet there's more, um, <laughs> there's a, li a, a library full of characters and maps and outlines from classic literature that you can also borrow and use in your stories if you just want to play around or if you're into adaptation or if that's your, you know, if that's your jam. Yeah. So, um, you know, those also, uh, you know, give you different ways of approaching stories. So if you wanted to start your story using the outline from Hamlet as your starting point, uh, you're welcome to do that but then once you've got it you can do whatever you want to it you can change the scenes around you can make it a comedy we don't care so uh, again it, it's about giving you a starting place and uh, something to play with uh, and then being able to scrap it or change it or make it your own so who would you think is uh, the ideal uh, audience for this particular mm -hmm. product who would you want this to be aimed at uh, well, I mean, ultimately, I, I think that anybody who's sort of looking to figure out how to put their story together, um, you know, I, I've also I've priced Story Builder very, very uh, inexpensively um, on purpose, because I think that if you're a new writer and you're just trying to figure things out, you want to be able to come in and be able to play and not feel the pressure of it being like a heavy duty uh, um, uh, hot, you know, yeah. burden. Yeah, it shouldn't be burdensome. But then also for newer, for for more established writers, if you just want to come in and use it, you know, quickly to you know map out your story and figure things out, um, I've got game developers who um, are interested in using it, use it as a way of structuring which activities happen where in their world, and then they can grab it out and pull it out and drop it into their game environments. Yeah. So I think that anyone who's really sort of looking for uh, sort of a clean, simple 
on, you know, a straightforward place to get started on their story, you know, should probably check us out. And then, uh, you know, if you're new to writing and you're, you know, you're insecure, you're writing, or if you publish on platforms like Wattpad or Archive of Our Own or any of the fan yeah. fiction sites and are looking for a place to keep track of all of those story elements as you're writing your 250 chapter fan fiction on the color of Benedict Cumberbatch's eyes, um, which I think exists. Um, <laughs> so, you know, you can keep track of all of those things as you're going along. Uh, or if you're just looking for some extra support and some guidance to help you sort of figure out how to put your story together, then we're here for you for that too. Thank you. Am I right in thinking that you can come in and pay for one month or a couple of months at a time? Is that right? Uh, yeah, I've, I'm, I'm, so I haven't turned on my, my shopping cart just just yet. We're just taking a bit of extra time okay. to make sure that the um, uh, that the the functionality is secure. Yeah. I'm, I'm very very sensitive about um, uh, about you know making sure that you know especially when it comes to financial data that everything's yeah. locked down. So, uh, but we should have by the end of this week, and um, we're structuring it with a pay by the month, which is uh, five dollars a month U.S. Oh, wow. Or uh, our annual subscription is only twenty five dollars U.S. Um, yeah. And you know, again, you know, keeping it, you know, you should be able to come in, you should be able to play around, you shouldn't feel like you're under pressure to produce all the time to justify your hundred dollar a year or whatever it is subscription fees that you know yeah. you might be paying elsewhere. Uh, you know, so it's a play space. Yeah, that's very good. So um, am I right in thinking that you actually designed a lot of this yourself? Because you're a founder, aren't you? I am a founder. Of, and of yeah, various different I, things. I actually built the entire platform myself. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, it was, uh, uh, some of the content has been, uh, was, was um, uh, assisted by a number of really brilliant um, interns that I've been lucky to uh, bring into the company. Um, but uh, the, the content itself, the structure, uh, the whole tech side of it, that's, it's all me. Wow. Well, um, well, congratulations. That is quite something. Um, so what made you want to create this and what was mm -hmm. this spur for, for mm -hmm. doing you know, all of this work? Because you're giving, <laughs> you're giving us all this yeah. lovely piece of equipment there, a good tool. Mm -hmm. But why did mm -hmm. you want to do it? Um, I, I think that Story Builder is, um, I, I like to say it's the, the center of the Venn diagram of my very weird, messy life. Oh, okay. um, I've been at um, different points in my life. I've been a writer. Um, I've been an English teacher. Um, I used to own a CD and video store in Stratford, Ontario, from oh, which right. I spun out a Shakespeare theater catalog. <laughs> very uh, sensible. Talked about. So, um, uh, and, you know, which is where a lot of my sort of technical skills sort of started to come into play. Yeah. Um, and so you know, if you sort of take the education and the writing and the entrepreneurial sort of aspect that were are all sort of part of my DNA, Story Builder just sort of felt like the obvious thing that I should be creating. Um, I actually came up with the idea. I was sitting with a friend of mine. We were going to uh, develop an app together um, just for fun. Yeah. And um, uh, we were playing around with things. And the idea for Story Builder, uh, when I realized what it was, I, I knew I knew what it was in its entirety. Um, like in that moment, I went home, I did wireframes, I had 60 pages of wireframes that night, I didn't sleep, I just I, I knew exactly what this thing needed to be. And I built it accordingly. So I, I think it was just that aha moment. And then once I knew what it was, and I knew with, with such clarity what it was supposed to be. Um, it was just, I, you know, I spent a year looking for money, but nobody gives money to single female tech founders. It doesn't <laughs> no. happen. Um, so after I realized I was wasting my time and that I actually had the skill set to do it myself and I should stop looking for help, um, I just buckled down and started building it. So it took me five years to do. Uh, we're all working wow. full time. Um, and uh, here we are. Well, congratulations <laughs> on such a good product. Yeah, thank you. Um, so when does it go live? Uh, so technically we're live now. Um, yep. The shopping cart uh, will be turned on uh, earlier this week. We've actually got uh, about 250 people already on the site. Yeah. Um, I would say that uh, if uh, people listening want to join and the cart hasn't been turned on yet, uh, that you should join our uh, newsletter and I'll make an announcement as soon okay. as the, uh, as soon as subscriptions are turned well, on. We're, we're just doing some like last minute uh, tweaking to make sure that everything's locked down. Um, it should be a couple of days. Well, that's good. Well, we'll share the, uh, the place to go at the end of this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, how do you think it's different then? How, do, how does it differ to other writing programs? Uh, well, again, I think that my emphasis on um, assistance and sort of facilitation is a really different approach uh, right. from a lot of the other systems. Uh, again, I mean, a lot of them are uh, organizational or um, product management tools. Yeah. 
um, and uh, less play spaces for, for writers to yeah. explore their stories. Um, and also I'm, I'm focusing very much on uh, simplifying the workflow, especially for newer writers and sort of taking out a lot of the noise. I mean, I, I know a lot of writers use Scrivener and it's a wonderful, wonderful tool, but if okay. you're a new writer, it's completely overwhelming. And yeah. it's even the pro writers that I know only use a, a fraction of it. So, you know, I wanted to strip all of that stuff out and make it simple for, uh, for newer writers and accessible. So you can just go in and sort of, and focus on your story without it uh, getting in the way. Um, yeah, I use Scrivener, but one of the criticisms of it, which I think is a fair criticism, is it's not really a, a word processor. As mm. you say, it's a, really a project manager. Right. Um, but people do try their best right. to actually write in it. Mm -hmm. In your product, would you consider that to be a, you know, a, a manager or would you consider it to be a word processor? Oh, um, uh, that's an interesting question. Um, I, I think it's both. Um, and I'd like to think that because it has the underlying education piece to it, that it's something more than that. Yeah. Um, I haven't really structured it uh, according to, um, it has, it has everything in it. It's sort of little buckets and you can go and you can do things in a sort of project management sort of way. Yeah. Uh, but once you're in the system, everything's integrated. So it's kind of both and neither at the same time. <laughs> Does that okay. make sense? Um, yeah. I've got a whiteboard, like a lot yeah. of my <laughs> colleagues and I sit, sometimes have to uh, work it out on the whiteboard first yeah but I couldn't write an entire book on the whiteboard to see mm -hmm. my point so could right. you write an entire book in your product oh yes absolutely right. yeah. yeah okay that's interesting <laughs> thank you for that how do you think the publishing industry has changed then it's mm -hmm. recently and how does your product fit into how those changes mm -hmm. Uh, the, so the publishing industry has changed dramatically. I mean, since I've started writing, it's, it's quite amazing. Um, I, have, I have two books that I ended up self-publishing. Uh, the first book I had finished writing in 2008, uh, which um, actually, well, yeah, 2008, I started sending it out to uh, agents yeah. and was getting back all sorts of requests for, for fulls. And um, uh, Neil Gaiman's uh, 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 agent liked it. She ended up passing on it, didn't Unfortunately, she said she was sure somebody would pick it up, but unfortunately didn't give me a list of people who I could call. Um, but, um, you know, it was it was everything was was sort of very, very close. So I took six months to rewrite my book, yeah. thinking that that would put me over the top. And when I came back out, it was right when that whole ebook came sort of in. crisis hit. Yeah. yeah. And so when I went back a few months later to start re uh, submitting to agents, it was a completely different universe so agents were gone they were yeah. just they, they just vanished so after a couple of years i just decided that again i have you know digital marketing skills i could do it so i self-published them myself um which you know in retrospect had i known that the the traditional publishing uh industry would settle uh, i might have waited a little bit longer to do that but what's happened really happened in the last 10 years i think is that uh publishing has gone from uh, you know, really very much a sort of a, a traditional publishing track or, or you have the indie presses and then yeah. there really weren't any other options to now, you know, you have the options of going to, you know, you go to the, one of the big houses or you can self-publish or you can uh, publish your story in any one of, you know, like dozens now of um, public sort of publishing sites, again, like Wattpad, like Radish is now coming up. Um, there's uh, Bublish. Uh, there's just so many of them. I can't even... Yeah. You know, the, you know, places where you can go and publish your story either as you write, which is sort of back the throwback to sort of an old Dickensian model. It of, is, yeah. you know, that's how you did write, it. Right. You know, do do your story one 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 chapter at a time. Uh, see what the feedback is. See, you know, yeah. see, and then adapt your story accordingly. Um, so that's changed. Um, and then in the the publishing world, I think it's become a lot more. Well, obviously, become a lot more difficult and much more competitive. To get your story into any of the traditional streams and i think that the mainstream publishers also have sort of have focused are, are now focusing a lot more on what they know to be marketable yeah because they have to so that means that a lot of the mid-list stuff is disappearing as well uh, and again this is something that i think that story builder can help with is that um, i think that people now uh you know put on their sorting hats and end up in either, you know, the tradition, I'm going to be a pro writer, this is what I want to do, or I'm going to publish on the public sites and, you know, just see, see what happens. Uh, and then again, that mid, the whole idea of the mid list and that idea of being uh, 
uh, competent <laughs> writer who writes, you know, strong, you know, who creates strong, beautiful things that in that middle space, it doesn't exist. And I think it's because a lot of what's happening now is that people aren't writing that because it's not an available stream. And also because there's no one backing them up. So if I can help to make the writers in the public streams better at what they do, um, then maybe we can start to rebuild uh, a mid list and start to create, you know, a stronger caliber of writers who, uh, you know, have the support that they need to write better books, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, everything's become very, very broken up and um, mm. uh, distributed now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thanks for explaining yeah. that. That's good. Mm. And you, we talked a little bit earlier about fan fiction. Mm. Um, people may not be 100% aware of what that is. So would you like <laughs> to just describe what fan fiction is to people who don't know? Sure. Uh, fan fiction is a type of writing that uh, takes some established IP or, or, or you know, or literary property, not yeah. even literary, it could be any kind of pop culture po property and reinvents a story, reinvents the characters or puts them into other situations that are not part of, um, you know, the established uh, work. Yeah. Um, so um, in Britain, of course, it's quite, it's quite well known that um, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch's uh, uh, Sherlock spawned an entire cottage industry of uh, fan fiction, of Sherlock fan fiction. Um, they are incredibly creative. Uh, they are um, sometimes quite strange. There's a huge contingent of writers who are of the opinion that the relationship between John Watson and uh, Sherlock Holmes in the BBC series um, is romantic. So yeah. there's a whole phrase for it. They call it John Locke. It's their <laughs> ro romantic name. And uh, they write stories about it. Um, it they, you can write fan fiction about um, uh, existing stories. You can write them. There's quite a lot of fan fiction about existing people. Um, you know, actors especially find themselves and, and musicians find themselves the subject of uh, quite a lot of, fan, of fanfic as well. Uh, so it's, um, uh, it, it's quite an interesting phenomenon. It's a very robust one. Um, and there's some really interesting uh, innovation um, happening as a result of that. And then these, uh, the writers and the authors of these particular works would then use mm -hmm. Wattpad to mm -hmm. send that out to uh, the audiences, would they? Uh, well, it depends on the on the platform. Uh, Wattpad in particular will give you just a text box and you write your story and you publish yeah. it. And then uh, as you publish each piece of your story, then people in your community will discover it and uh, and comment on it um, and uh, respond accordingly. And then as, a, as an author, you can make decisions about whether or not you want to change your story or adapt things. Uh, there are some really interesting things happening where uh, writers will write, say, 10 chapters of a story and then based on the conversation that they're having with their readers, they'll go back and rewrite chapter four from a different character's perspective or make the whole thing appear to be a dream and then rewrite it from a different, completely different perspective or um, having changed all of the information. Uh, it's, it sort of creates almost like this quantum universe of um, story building that is, uh, again, really quite fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. And how would uh, Story Builder then fit in mm -hmm. with that particular mm -hmm. model? Would you, I mean, in my head, I'm thinking mm -hmm. that you have to write the entire mm -hmm. uh, novel inside mm -hmm. Story Builder first. Mm -hmm. but do you? But do you? No, no, absolutely not. And again, I, Wattpad's not the only, you know, there's hundreds of these sites yeah. and, and the fan fiction sites like uh, Archive of Our Own, fanfiction.net, uh, they're all, they've got millions of users uh, who are creating these stories. Uh, but no, if, you, if you're if you writing, uh, what, what, I, what I can offer with Story Builder is the opportunity to write your chapters one at a time. Right. But in addition to writing your chapters, you're also keeping track of, you know, your characters, what characters are where. Yeah. Um, if you want to remember which one of Benedict Cumberbatch's eyes is blue and which one's green, you know, you can make sure that you've got that documented in a place where you can find it. Uh, so you don't forget 100 chapters later. Um, I, not that anybody would, but um, <laughs> who writes yeah. that kind of fiction. Um, but um, uh, you can keep track of all of those pieces. Um, you can start to see, you, you can actually see how your plot is developing from, you know, with the reports and the and, and mapping. Yeah. Uh, and then you can plan accordingly. So you could plan your story in Story, in story Builder 10, 20, 30 chapters ahead uh, and write them and, and, and then publish out when, yeah. when you're ready. But you're not constrained with having to just write the one chapter and then write the next chapter, you know, without any support or uh, mechanism to figure out what you're doing or where you're going next. Yeah, I know you're going to say to me mm -hmm. any, but I was going to ask you what age group you think mm -hmm. that your product is aimed at. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to see any. Yeah, um, no, I, we're, we're right now we're, we're really sort of working with uh, writers, I would say 18 to 35 yeah. seems to be kind of our sweet That's what it right sounded now. like to me, but yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I'd love to go younger than that, uh, but there's a whole bunch, again, there's a bunch of uh, data privacy issues and things yeah. that need to be sorted out. And because it's just me at the moment, I have to do these things in sequence. But, um, but I do have, again, I have older writers who are, who are really happy to come in and play around and are grateful for a place that isn't sort of, you know, old school design, you know, yeah. and I think that's, that's part of the freedom of it. Have you um, sort of like beta tested it on young mm -hmm. people? 20 year olds and how do they mm. how do they respond to it oh they're they love it yeah okay. they, they the whole yeah i mean even even the conversation about being able to keep track of all of their their bits and pieces uh in um you know from you know as they're writing their fan fiction uh, their eyes light up and um they're 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 all in so cool <laughs> yeah. so um you you've written a couple of books yourself what are those fantasy books that's the first uh, question they are Yes. Oh, cool. Uh, yes, yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 yeah. We're 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 in the, we're in the right forum. Yeah. So, um, my my two novels are well. It's the first two of a series, which I've now parked because of Story Builder. Yeah. Um, but uh, the series is called Emma and the Elementals. Uh, okay. The first book is uh, Rootbound. The second one is Waterworks. Uh, they're the story of a young girl named Emma who uh, falls down holes and into it, basically portal um, accidents that send her into a different. Um, uh, into different fantasy worlds in which which are inhabited by a bunch of uh, basement brownies whose uh, names are all based on name they're, they're all named after different types of foundations and um, uh, witches and um, uh, different uh, characters who are all based on either uh, classic mythology or uh, early children's stories okay. that's really sort of where I come from uh, the first story the uh, root bound is uh, very much about finding your way home Mm. And it is uh, rooted in uh, Greek mythology. There are gorgons and such uh, in that one. Uh, the second book is um, about ways of thinking and trying to figure out how to sort of find your way through confusing times, uh, which is a water book. And it is uh, rooted in Pinocchio and um, uh, a lot of uh, sort of and uh, some, some uh, Australian mythologies. Um, uh, Okay. And and also uh, uh, Gulliver's Travels as well. Oh, wow! So really, you are the Emma mm -hmm. character, and you've fallen into a por portal yourself because that's what story builders become. For you. <laughs> yes, you've fallen into much, this yes. big hole, which has yes. got um, good good guys and bad guys inside it lurking. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, yeah, Emma. The Emma stories are are very much about sort of finding your way through, sort of slipping through the cracks, and finding yeah. your way through these difficult situations and finding that there's always a little way a little way to slip through and uh, yeah i would say that you know creating uh, an entire platform is very much about discovering problems and trying to figure out where the cracks are and mm. either slipping through them and closing them up or um finding some other way to get through them so <laughs> it's, it's lovely that um in um fiction generally but i think even better in fantasy fiction everybody's looking out for each other everybody's mm. trying to help each other obviously that's mm. what you've done here you've given a huge and very important and impressive tool to all the other fantasy fiction authors because that's how you've started as yourself as a would you this is going to be a difficult question for you <laughs> imagine if you just come across storyboarder would you mm -hmm. want to write the third book using it uh, well, I hope to. Oh, cool. um, yeah. So I, and a lot of what I put into Story Builder was this sort of idiosyncratic approach to writing that I that I already have, um, and that I knew I wasn't able to accommodate in other people's uh, platforms. Uh, I, I will still need to understand what the story. Actually, I already know this. I actually know. <laughs> I, I know the plots, and and I know what happens in the next two books. That's not a problem. They're they're written in my head. Yeah. Uh, I just haven't had time to sit down and and write them out. And so yes, I will absolutely write them in Story Builder. Oh, well, that's good news. I'm pleased to hear that. Yes. <laughs> so if somebody wants to have a look at Storyboard, you said that there's a newsletter. So where would they go to get that then? Uh, I would just say go to uh, storybuilder.com. That's storybuilder, B-I-L-D-E-R, no yep. U. And uh, just look for the button to sign up for this, the newsletter um, and it will uh, and that will set you up. We just need an email address and uh, an opt-in. And So there's and no strings attached to that. They just no. will get the no. newsletter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we'll just bother you once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> and is there any other way to follow it? Have you got any other mm -hmm. social networks like Twitter or anything? Oh, yes. Uh, we're everywhere. We're on Facebook and on Twitter as at Story Builder. 
we uh, were not able to get that for Instagram. So for Instagram, we're at Story Builder app. What's on the Instagram? How do you show pictures of words? That others... um, we're, we're actually we're using Instagram primarily to uh, to drop uh, writing hints and tips. Uh, right. We, we uh, do some writing prompts from time to time. Okay. Um, right now we're doing obviously notices about the, uh, a contest that we're running, um, which uh, depending on actually depending on where your listeners are, uh, we yeah. are running a writing contest at the moment. Uh, unfortunately, only for Canadian and U.S. Uh, residents. Okay. So well, I don't know a lot of the people. listeners are from, yeah. especially from Canada. This to be a huge uh, listenership. <laughs> From oh, Canada. that's, <laughs> so, that's great, great to so hear. Then, to hear that. If that's yeah, the case, then we're open. Uh, the contest is open until May 14th and the theme is love. So oh, um, wonderful. Yep. Very Valentine's mm-hmm. Day ish. Yes. Yeah. And do you have any YouTube channel? Because I'm thinking that it'd be really nice for somebody like me who don't mm-hmm. want to go straight into it yet, but I'd like to see how it operates. Mm-hmm. Is there a way mm-hmm. to see how it operates on the YouTube video? Uh, well, Actually, on our main page of our website, we have an explainer video. Oh, uh, it's uh, a little bit out of date. We're just in the process of uh, updating it, and we're, we'll be refreshing it shortly. But it has, still has all the information that you might need, um, and you can you can run through it. It'll sh- it'll show you what all the parts are and how they all fit together. Okay, so, so you um, would access this via a computer, but is there a way of accessing it from your phone or gadget? Is there an app? Um, not a hundred percent yet. I haven't okay. quite finished optimizing for mobile uh, again, because it's just me. I have to sort of pick my battles. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I wanted to uh, get it up and running for desktop because desktop is, um, it, it's a lot of moving pieces and I wanted to make sure that yeah. you know everything was where it needed to be. Uh, the next step will be um, streamlining it and making sure that it's, um, it's usable via your phone. Uh, and then the next step after that would be creating like separate apps. So I'd like to create separate apps so that you could just like do your world building on your phone or yeah. do, you know, uh, do or create characters or just play around with different component parts of, of your, uh, uh, of your story with, without actually having to be sort of attached to the mothership. So it needs to be an app that can work offline and then you can sync. Yeah. You can sync with your story when you, when you get to your office or wherever it is that you're going. Cause it strikes me that people like me who are a million years old, we do use mm. desktops, but yeah. um, mm. the majority of younger people mm probably wouldn't even know what this top is anymore. Um, actually, oddly, um, judging from our analytics, uh, I would say yeah. 70% of the people coming to our website are using desktop. So, uh-huh. you know, it's, there, there's, there's um, I, I work in digital media and uh, digital marketing is my day job. And uh, there's always this big push to go to, to mobile. And yes, I mean, it's really important. But when I look at the analytics from, for a lot of these companies, um, I it, we're, we're not there yet. We're, we're not at a place where everybody is really... Still may not living. be there yet in uh, yeah. the west in the western yeah. world but i know right. that in africa and india and probably other mm. huge populations they yeah. are basically a mobile yes led um yeah no absolutely technology. yeah and and i and i am looking to you know to yeah. get there it's just again one thing at a time i can't be everywhere at once so no, much, you as, can't. much I as mean, i would like to try what you've done <laughs> anyway yourself is in- yeah. incredible Thank so you. you are a kind of a serial entrepreneur aren't you uh, I guess I would. Yes, I think so. Yeah, I've been working since I was 14. Wow. Uh, yeah. So uh, actually, probably earlier than that, if you want to include babysitting and paper routes and all of that, um, which I guess you probably should, because, yeah, that's... you know, why not? So yeah, then I've been working since I was 10. Uh, I've had like regular jobs with like an, with an actual uh, with with source deductions and all that. Uh, those that started when I was 14. I was a data entry clerk at our public library. Um, so yeah, I've just always worked and done things. That's the way things go for me. How do you actually shake yourself down and get, get yourself up? Because I imagine being an entrepreneur, especially a founder of various mm. different things, is a bit like being a boxer, you know, like Rocky. You know, I'm sure you must get pummeled to the ground. How do you actually pull yourself up and get get motivated again? Um, practice. Um, <laughs> um, but I mean, different different hits um, affect you differently. I mean, ah. The boxer analogy, I think, is very good. I mean, you get hit in certain places. It might knock yeah. you to the ground, but may not do damage, right? That's true. Yeah, so yeah. I think as, as you get more experienced in entrepreneurship, you get better at identifying what's you know, what, what is real damage? And when, when do you, when do you, when should you Ah. just stop and realize that you've hurt yourself to a point where you just need to not get back up again? Um, You know, as I said, I had a CD and video store in Stratford, Ontario, and I did, I spun out this Shakespeare catalog that just sort of came out of nowhere. 
well, it didn't come out of nowhere. I, my, my degrees are in Shakespeare theater history. I was in Stratford. Oh, wow. I wanted to start, I started pulling Stratford, in Shakespeare Stratford, videos Stratford. into my store. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I put Shakespeare videos in my, in my, cat, in my, in my, in my store, um, turned into a, a very early web catalog. My first website was like plain HTML where you had to code every page yeah. and our order form was a page you had to print out, fill out, mail in because there was that, that's just the way things were at, where we were at at the point. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, just having having those opportunities. And then when I closed that down, it was um, it was pretty devastating to me. I ended up closing that down in two, two parts. Uh, first, my storefront got bought out by the Stratford Festival uh, because they wanted it for their theater store, which was great. So I was sh I shut down the CD and video portion of the store then, which was fine. And I was ready to do that. Uh, it was also at a time when it was just as Napster was happening and yeah. there was writing was kind of on the wall for the music industry already. So yeah. I was able to sort of transition out of that fairly easily. So um, a punch in the sense that I closed it down, but not so not not a bad one. It was a little more of a hug because it was, you know, because it was something that, um, you know, I got bought out of my, my contract and I was able, you know, my, my rent and I was able to move on. Closing down the Shakespeare catalog was um, a much bigger thing for me. I was able to keep that running for another five years or so. Uh, we ended up with over 3,000 Shakespeare-related items in the catalog, including uh, we had the largest collection of video and DVD in the world at the time. I had customers in 42 countries. Um, I was, you know, it, it was it was a pretty amazing thing that really sort of could only exist in that one period of time. Yeah. And then YouTube happened and uh, Netflix happened. And, you know, how could I justify charging somebody $14.99 for a copy of Last Action Hero, which has yeah. a two minute clip of Arnold Schwarzenegger doing to be or not to be, not yeah. to be, um, <laughs> you know, when they could download it for free on YouTube. And yeah. again, the writing was on the wall. Um, I, you know, it was, um, yeah, it would, uh, shutting down at that point was, was, was much more difficult than closing down yeah, the CD store. Wow. Yeah, that's a big sponging down <laughs> to use mm. boxing phrase again. Yeah. So um, mm. uh, imagine that a story builder has been running for five years. Would mm. that be something you'd continue with or have you got other ideas in your head? I, I think at this point, I'm, I don't have the capacity to think about future <laughs> right. projects. Yeah. But um, I think like if I can, in, in the next five years, if I could get story builder to a place where it's, you know, providing comfortable living and it's, you know, really established itself, um, in the way that I think that it can, then at that point, I'm, uh, I would be looking to sort of have a quieter life. I think in my, my, my golden years, I'm looking to, uh, to, to get back to writing. I'd love to spend more time That'd doing that, yeah. uh, as well as uh, spending time mentoring younger women uh, in business to help them yeah. have, get the leg up that I never was allowed to have. So um, yeah. I think it's very, very important for me to, um, to pass that down and uh, ensure that the next generation have the support that they need. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. That's very inspiring mm. words. Mm. So you're an inspiring lady. Um, is there any way that people could follow you if they're listening to this and mm. they say, actually, I'd just like to follow this lady for a bit? Have you got have you got your own social presence, social media? Um, I'm, I'm actually quite socially shy, uh, okay. but I am available on LinkedIn. So if anybody wants okay. to connect with me there, you can find me on LinkedIn. That's probably yeah, the that easiest way. That makes sense way. to me. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense to me. Mm. Okay. Yeah, no, just a reminder to your Canadian um, uh, listeners, Canadian American listeners, that we have a contest uh, running um, and it ends on March 14th. Uh, it's uh, genre agnostic, so whatever genre you'd like to write, we're just looking for short uh, 500 to 1500 words, uh, short stories and the, uh, on a theme of love. However, love, whatever love means to you, however that looks to you, we just want, we just want to paper the world with love for, for the next month. Okay, so. can I just confirm that's mm -hmm. the closing date? Because I thought you said May earlier. Oh, sorry, uh, March, March 14th. March 14th. Sorry. Okay, that's wonderful. Apologies. And, how... uh, and th there is a cash prize of $1,000 US. Well, wow, that's so, even more important. Yes. We, don't... <laughs> we should have said that right at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> and where do they go if they want mm -hmm. to find out about Story Builder again? Uh, story Builder is story, S-T-O-R-Y, builder, B-I-L-D-E-R.com. And if you put a forward slash love, it'll take you to the contest. So, Brilliant. so Okay, thank you very much, Tanya. It's lovely talking to you. And they'll be interested to know how you get on. And I'm thinking yeah. of having a look at it. I might um, invest it in a couple of months myself. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, and see well, how we go I'd on, be, but, be glad but, to give you a walk through. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, it's lovely talking to you and good luck with everything. Bye. Thank you, Thank you so much.